Okay, welcome to a review of Triniton. I'm going to show a uh, Triniton. This is a complex game with some simple concepts that uh, I can't fully do it justice in this review. It would take too long, but I will do uh, my best to give you an overview of what Triniton is, which was created by Christian Allen. Allen, if you say, and uh, he has quite a bit of content here. Um, so this is Triniton, a role-playing game. Triniton was created by Christian Allen. And as you can see um, in the intro, it really talks about how this game was made for, inspired by his daughters and uh, children and giving them the opportunity to really be introduced to role-playing games for the first time. The interesting thing about Triniton is it's, uh, you can see how inclusive it is from some of the art, but it really brings home the idea that if role-playing had been, uh, role-playing games had been created without their war game roots, uh, what would it be like? And uh, Christian includes what you can call a toolbox, um, which includes a, f a couple of things. Um, I'll show you three of them here before we get too far in. One is the prequel fiction. So this is fiction that comes with the book. This is considered long fiction. It's actually not that long, but it's longer than the description and introduction that comes with the book is, itself. There is also a soundtrack for free that you can download, um, which is really helpful. And again, a multimedia experience. Christian takes that very seriously in how he approaches his gaming. And a card deck. And the card deck actually uh, has special cards, but it also has cards that represent the different uh, crystals. And as you can see with the numbers here, these cards can also be suitable as playing cards. So, uh, which also means you don't actually tr strictly need them. You can use playing cards and the game actually takes advantage of these cards to create some special uh, mini games within it. So what is Trinitron? Trinitron takes place in a world known as Arbes. Um, Arbes is a self-contained universe that is limited in geography. And as a result, that means that there's quite a few mysteries. There's at least two cities. It has a pretty claustrophobic feel. Here's the two cities. Um, and you can see Arbes, Arbes, my accent makes me want to say Arbes, um, really has a variety of, of different um, terrains and uh, opportunities for adventure. But what it really is, is reminiscent of a couple different genres. Uh, reminds me of uh, Attack on Titan in the sense that it's claustrophobic. There are monsters everywhere and the city is contracting. Civilization is under constant risk. Um, the Hunger Games, there is the opportunity for riots and um, the different regions are in competition for limited resources. And Dark City, which it speaks to some of the content that uh, is found out at the end of this uh, as a spoiler. And suffice it to say that not everything is as it seems. And there is more technology, even though this is a low uh, technology world, there's more technology at work behind the scenes. A couple interesting rules here that come with Triniton. One is under pressure. You saw the four regions. Uh, under pressure causes bad things to happen, which means that potentially you can actually have uh, riots if it's a civilized area or random monster encounters if it is a uh, wilderness area. And uh, different regions can uh, undergo that under pressure factor as things escalate. And there's also urgency and quakes. Urgency and quakes uh, tied to bad events happening where the place start literally starts to fall apart. Uh, earthquakes start to happen. And this, of course, of course, causes extreme duress to the citizens of Barbes. Um, the characters wake up with no memory of what's going on. You have characters here. And Christian's really tried to make this role-playing game as uh, user-friendly as possible. You see there are some statistics, um, but they're pretty freeform. And you also see that uh, there's also a name generator here. So you can use the characters that are in there or start with your own name generators. This is another really interesting piece, which is um, how to improvise role-playing. Christian really goes out of his way. In the, in the beginning here, he talks about how to sell it, who to play with, how to find folks online. Uh, again, this is a modern game um, made in the context of role-playing, everything we know about role-playing, not sort of the D&D &D legacy 
that has evolved over time. So it's a lot, lot more accessible. And you can see here, he has a r wide range of uh, abilities and uh, uh, rules. So you can start with a one die roll and go as far as and complex as using D&D with it, which would probably be my preference. Um, but yeah, you can see here there's a role playing um, uh, add on to make role playing easier, where the player goes from using themselves and talking about what they would use and how to reach their goal. So even that's visualized in a sort of a really interesting way. You can also see stages here. Um, the book is written linearly. Uh, if there is a challenge, that is that the book, unfortunately, uh, doesn't have an index. It really probably could use one because there's so many really awesome ideas here. And you can see, by the way, that um, there's also a huge amount of awesome content. Um, but you can't always find it all. So you got to sort of read through it first one time, cover to cover. You can see here the awakening, journaling, realization, finding a solution, big decision. Um, and this is hinted at in the story and uh, certainly resolves as you go through the entire uh, book eventually. So this is it. Um, you start in chapters. You can see there's monsters. You can see there's creatures. You can see there's crystals. Uh, the crystals are something that can be collected and as well also have uh, attributes that change the characters. They basically act as sort of level up of powers and abilities and uh, really work well in creating a, um, the, to give the characters a sense of, of escalation and, and power. And you can see that in the, in the, the system here. Uh, each chapter is actually divided up by one of these elements. And of course, as you can imagine, the crystals and the information all line up to be something really interesting. Here's, there's maps and it starts with a town. It progresses to a city. It continues into dungeons, and eventually, as you'll be able to see, um, it's got everything from tree monsters to kind of zombie-esque creatures with really full-color maps. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So that's the basic of it, which is, is not small. I mean, this book numbers in over 200 pages. Uh, monsters are introduced as... The adventure progresses, which does mean that if you're looking for a particular monster, you're going to have to dig for it. Um, but they are where they appear. Um, there's stuff on the sea, uh, underwater, uh, in the towns and cities and in the wilderness. And um, it actually has a resolution. So this is one of those uh, situations where the book wraps up its ending. Um, it doesn't mean that that's the end, but it does mean that this book is a complete campaign from beginning to end. And that's one of the advantages of having a system in a uh, closed setting like Arbes, which, which has the opportunity to really um, tell a complete story. There's advice on game mastering. There's rules on name generation for game masters, um, all kinds of relationships with the various factions that influence players, and uh, lots of opportunity to, by the way, even include this into other universes. Like I said, you could easily play D&D with it or actually use D&D characters in it. There's also an Arbuspedia, which is sort of like Wikipedia that gives you a general overview. So you add all this up, and this is a gorgeous game with a lot of content and chock full of ideas. Um, you may not necessarily want to use it as is. I think most people won't, but they could easily see adapting it to their favorite game. And I, uh, I think it's actually really compelling. And also, in a lot of ways, very friendly to, uh, to, new, to kids, to new players of any gender. Um, that is definitely not tied to wargaming roots. It's just definitely a storytelling game, more in the anime style. Like I said, if you're a fan of Attack on Titan, if you're a fan of Dark City, if you're a fan of the Hunger Games, I think this would uh, play quite well. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more from Christian, see what he comes up with. And uh, if you want to check it out, well, there's more information in the comments and description below. So you can uh, pur purchase it as well as any of the other pieces that come with it. Thanks again.